His name is Paul. He was born in this village like 60 years ago. And he is now a retired civil servant. This is a village that is more than a hundred years old. Uh, if you consider the founders of the village up to their parents, and he now being uh, 60 years old goes to indicate how long they have been in this village. Yes, back in, in the day, this place was like a thick forest. Nobody settled here. And as you are aware, uh, it took a lot of uh, courage and hard work for their forefathers to uh, establish a settlement here and uh, make it habitable to this point. Originally, Majagos, we all know, they hail from Guinea Bissau. But they were in the Gambia here since 18th century. They were brought here in, by the Portuguese. And uh, most of our activity is about farming. Manjagos are not accustomed to you living in the cities. They live away and do their own things in, a, in isolation, but in peaceful way and in obedience to the law of the land, wherever they happen to be. And that's one of our uh, identity. Once you say you are Manjago, the next thing they think is trash. Because At the uh, time, land was not being sold as we know it now. People engage in shifting cultivation. You clear a particular section and probably plant coos this year. And then you leave it fallow and move to another area and clear it to plant beans or plant peanuts. That's how their parents used to practice their agriculture. Uh, Manjagos came to this country. Some of them live in the cities, some of them, most of them live in the villages. And these are extremist village of Manjago settlements. Yes, they were settled by people, but that's the nature of migration. You must meet some people somewhere. You either be the first or be the second or whatever. But once you are settled, you should be at your liberty and operate free like any other person that you found there. Uh, and this is what we have been enjoying in this country uh, for over centuries. But of recent, when development is rapidly kind of coming, and towards the major Manjago uh, uh, settlement, people think that we don't deserve to have a change in our life. We don't deserve to inherit what belongs to our forefathers. We don't deserve to operate freely like others. But instead, they want to suppress us by taking our lands. Land is our capital we have. A son and a Carlo. Uh, our grandparents in the lineage is where I come from, where my father comes from, and the same time where I come from. Uh, there is uh, it's a very old village uh, which our fathers told us they were born here. Uh, we were living here peacefully up to this uh, recent of 18, uh, 20, around 2015, no, 2005, 2006, 2008, 2009, coming to us at the present time we are, we start experiencing problems from the, the other group, Mandikas ethnic groups, claims that they are the owner of this area, claiming that they were, they were the people who host our people. If people are not honest, we'll show them that we know where their limits should be. And that's why we put a petition, they do the investigation, come back to say that we are right, and they hand over our land. But after the change of government, the same people come back, to say that we are favored, that they're they taking their land, giving people, threatening people, giving them eviction order, that's true legal means, dubious legal uh, eviction order. You are giving eviction order, but when you go to the court, there is no judgment. And without judgment, they cannot give you eviction order. I have, have evidence of that. Whatever I'm saying here 
is not hearsay of empirical experience of it. Said at some point they received an eviction notice that the entire village should vacate, should leave here because somebody owns the land. And that matter is currently in court. It's at the high court. Mm. When these things come up, like this uh, land grant, they start selling land, even where we are, just all these areas, they sold it, and these are where it belongs to the Manjagos. And if you can go again after here, you see the same thing. Here, the same thing. So we are surrounded by and all north, south, east of this village. You still want to suffocate them of that privilege they have. And to be honest with you, if it's not NGOs, there's no state uh, 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 supply of basic facilities like electricity and water. Even wells are not dealt for, for the communities. The people do the, their own thing by themselves. And yet still, we are tax-abiding citizens. We pay tax regularly, yearly. My name is Kumbamen. I live in there. We are tired here in our, uh, in our village here. Even about even this uh, water, even what about water? Even we don't even have water here in our village here. It's only about this local pump which is here. We only we, we every time we manage about it. Uh, only every uh, only this one, and if this one is poor, what will we do? So we want uh, our leaders to help us so that we can make our land to be perfect. Is what I have for you. Don't tell me the norna terumbos no bandinga liyo. I think that ya ku imba ba ni e don e issue here has to do with. The insecurity as far as their land is concerned because people can come at any time and claim to own the land. And also, they have a huge uh, challenge with access to potable water. There is only one well here, and, uh, and the alkalo is not here. Sometimes they are forced to go all the way to Sanyang to buy water. Every 20 liter gal uh, drum that they fill, they pay $10 and then they have to transport it to the village. So it's quite a uh, cumbersome seeing that the issue here has to do with. And imagine a woman who inherited a plantation from the late husband. Those, bu those uh, uh, plantations are being bulldozed. How are they going to survive? A widow, how is she going to survive? All these things were reported to the authority. As I told you, as law abiding people, we never skip any authority responsible for this. We go there sequential up to the pinnacle of it. Okay, decision has been taken. Right now we put another report, which was, I handed over directly to the president. Because this year is an election year. We don't want to agitate too much. We'll be seen as people used by opposition. We decided to uh, play it cool. But immediately after election, we are taking it up. And on, unless our plight are being taken care of, we will never relent. That one is obvious. We can talk over it openly anywhere. It's not a secret. And we are not reporting. We are just telling what is happening. We are not alleging anything. All what you said, we have it in our report. Very comprehensive report for that matter. We went around from one village to an order, from one person to an order. You understand? Myself speaking here, I'm going to series of high courts. People are claiming my land. Even though I've leased it already, they're claiming my land and taking me to court.